Don't you love it when pumpkins and gourds show up in the supermarket? It means it's fall. We all know what a pumpkin looks like, but did you know the word pumpkin in the English language first showed up during the translation of Grimm's fairy tale Cinderella when the fairy godmother transformed a pumpkin into a coach so she could go to the ball? We tend to know pumpkins in the United States to eat pie, but also to turn them into jack-o'-lanterns. But you know, the original people to do jack-o'-lanterns were the Irish who used to use turnips and potatoes to create jack-o'-lanterns. Very creepy looking. Pumpkins grow in every continent of the earth, except for Antarctica, and every continent has its own giant pumpkin contest every year. The heaviest pumpkin gets the prize, and the largest pumpkin ever is a 2,600-pound pumpkin from Belgium from 2016 that broke the world record. Did you know every single pumpkin has about 500 seeds inside of it? Did you know every part of the pumpkin plant, from the flowers to the leaves to the skin, flesh, and seeds, and even the stem is edible? Also, botanically, the pumpkin is officially a fruit and not a vegetable. And no matter the color of skin, all pumpkins have orange flesh on the inside. There are over 45 varieties of pumpkin, so pick your favorite and let's get drawing. To start, grab your watercolor paper and draw a nice big circle on it, taking up most of the paper. It depends on the type of pumpkin that you're doing, so it'll either be more of an oval shape or a circle shape or kind of a flat oval shape. Once you have the overall shape towards the top of your pumpkin, you're gonna draw the stem coming out from the top center and erase the pumpkin shape underneath so it looks like your stem is actually sitting on top. Then you're gonna draw the ribs of the pumpkin and these are gonna be spaced out and they're gonna curve and they're gonna curve along the way that a pumpkin would actually curve to make it look three dimensional. Then just like we did with the seashells, you're gonna add little bumps between each rib so that it looks more three dimensional. Once you've done that, go ahead and erase any bit of the original circle that you had so that all you see left is the realistic looking pumpkin with the ribs all spaced out. And all those ribs are coming out from the stem. Go ahead and add a nice little curved line for a little bit of a stem action. Grab your liquid glue, I'm using Elmer's, just white Elmer's glue here, and trace over all the pencil marks. Once your glue is dry, go ahead and decide your colors. For my pumpkin, I'm going to go ahead and use the warm colors, so orange and red and yellow. But if you want to do a different color pumpkin, go ahead and use those colors. Just use a variety of them, at least three colors in each section of your pumpkin. Then for the background, go ahead and choose a color that will make your pumpkin flesh stand out really nicely, so the complementary color. deciding on your background color, you're going to want to go with the complement. So the complement to yellow is purple, the complement to red is green, and the complement to orange is blue. My pumpkin is red, orange, and yellow, so I went ahead and chose 
uh, a purple and a blue color. I mostly used purple. I used two different uh, shades of purple here. And you need to consider what color you want your background to be so that your pumpkin stands out. If I made mine red and orange, it wouldn't stand out. So consider the colors you're using. Before we move on to the last part of this project, we need to talk about eyeballs. Check out the iris up close. It is so cool. If you check out the inside of the eyeball, you'll find how we and nearly all animals see. The part we're discussing today is the back part of the eye. It's a layer called the retina. And the retina has specialized cells that respond to light and they're called photoreceptors. There are two types of photoreceptors in the retina rods and cones. Here you can see them under a super microscope and the green ones are the rods and the purple ones are the cones. Let's start with rods. Rods are most sensitive to light and dark changes and to shape and movement. They don't see color so you really use them when it's dark. It's also why you don't see much color in dim light. We have more rods than cones, 120 million rods in one retina and they are focused in on your peripheral vision. That's why it's actually easier to see a dim star when you look next to it than when you look directly at it. Now let's talk about cones. Cones are not as sensitive to light as rods, but they are sensitive to color. There are three different types of cones in the human eye, and one is to see red, another sees blue, and one sees green. They then send light with the rod cells to the brain, which then translates the image. So cones only work in bright light, and that's why you can't see color in dark places. There are six million cones in a human retina, and you may have heard of people, or you yourself, maybe what is called colorblind. That's when someone has trouble uh, differentiating between color because they're missing a particular type of cone, either red or blue or green, or one or more types of their cones may be weak. It's not very uncommon, especially in males. About 8% of all males are colorblind, and about a half a percent of females are. So what does this have to do with our pumpkin? I'm so glad you asked. We're going to give our cones a workout today and differentiate between slight variations of color. I'm going to show you pictures, and I want you to silently point to the shade of green that is different. They'll get tougher. So here's the first one. Which green is different? we put them all together, you can easily see this one's different. How about now? Which shade of green is different? Again, if we put them all together, it's a little easier to see. All right, for your last one, which shade is different? That one was really tough. It's this one. So back to our pumpkins. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a skinny Sharpie marker and outline around all of the glue along the inside and the outside. Once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and try to find any changes in color in your watercolor. So start off with easy parts, like parts here are obviously more orange and other parts are more yellow. And just keep tracing around those bits uh, and get as detailed and as complex as you want using your eyeballs to see all the changes and variation in color. <laughs> 